bridge above the ground. If we were to restore the vast areas of the planet where we humans have degraded the soils, just think what an impact we would have in taking carbon out of the atmosphere. As much as a quarter of the world's land mass has been degraded, and much could be rehabilitated in the way we have seen on the Luz Plateau. And we've only just begun to recognize the real value of natural capital. Surely investing in the recovery of damaged environments is a cost-effective way of solving many of the problems we face today. The source of wealth is the functional ecosystems. The products and services that we derive from those are derivatives. It's impossible for the derivatives to be more valuable than the source. And yet, in our economy now, as it stands, the products and services have monetary values. But the source, the functional ecosystems, are zero. So this cannot be true. It, it's false. So we've created a global institution of economic institutions and economic theory based on a flaw in logic. So if we carry that flaw in logic from generation to generation, we compound the mistake. On the lush plateau, they have understood the message. The lives of 20 million people across China have been directly improved by applying the lessons of the lush plateau. The changes are not simply on the hillsides. On the plains, you can see greenhouses that are filled with vegetables. This extends the growing season. It's very high value produce. The abundance and variety of new produce can be seen in the local market. Follow-up studies have shown that incomes have risen threefold. Wealth is being happy, living in nature, listening to the birds, breathing clean air, not having chemical pollution throughout everything, not having these, these, these horrible problems. So, you know, we, we need to redefine and, and revalue our, our belief systems. We need to understand that money is a belief system. There's nothing wrong with money, it turns out. The problem is that what is money based on? If money is based on functional ecosystems, then the future will be beautiful. If money continues to be based on production and consumption of goods and services, we'll turn everything into a desert. What is the future for our children and our children's children and generations to come in the future? Liu also did research in Bolivia where biomass is burnt to make room for agriculture. Here in the foothills of the Andes, slash and burn agriculture is taking place today. The people who are doing this think that they are getting some short-term economic gain, but what's the loss to biodiversity, biomass, soil fertility, and hydrological function? Biomass in a functional ecosystem has economic value. Why destroy it when you can also use it to restore landscapes elsewhere? The idea is that there are different biomes on the earth. And some of them, I mean, there are many, obviously, but two that I've noticed also both have problems. There are areas which are brittle and fragile and arid or hyper-arid, like here. And then there are areas which are able to create huge amounts of biomass, like in the tropics. So what about linking these two areas together? What about generating huge amounts of, of organic material there 
and moving it here, or at least at least a percentage of it. You don't want to deplete the fertility there, but but a small amount of that could come. If that came here, you'd create an industry there instead of them using slash and burn agriculture to grow crops which they can't even feed themselves and destroy what is the most valuable thing about their system they would have money and a job and they and then here you'd have another industry to do restoration so this would create two huge industries employ untold numbers of people and put us on a pathway towards sustainability that's constantly sequestering carbon infiltrating more and more rainfall, giving us food security in places that are now experiencing famine. It's extraordinary. Well, you can see, considering we're in a desert, we've got kind of a lush herbaceous 